Being in the renewable energy sector, I've always wondered why we don't see more wind turbines in residential application. My attention was caught by Liam F1, made by a Dutch company, with its revolutionary design making this wind turbine supposedly highly efficient and super cheap to run. I mean, it sounds like such a great supplement for solar panels installed on your home. While solar panels generate energy during the day, wind turbines can capture wind at night during the day basically around the clock. So it seems like an ideal and most affordable marriage. I mean, wind is one of the cheapest energy sources in renewable energy sector, and also the most popular in grid scale generation, even cheaper than solar. So what has been the issue and why don't we see more wind turbines on residential homes? We will talk about all that in today's video. This topic definitely extends way beyond a 10 minute video, so I will make sure to dive deeper into various aspects of wind turbine options in the upcoming content. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out in the future. Now today we're going to dive into how wind turbines actually do their thing. We will also compare them to solar power, weighing the pros and the cons. And then we will also look at some cool turbine inventions as well. We want to understand why, in the big picture, wind is leading on the grid scale as our top renewable resource at a whooping 10.3% share in 2022, and then on the flip side, solar is hanging in there at around 3.4% you don't see almost any residential wind turbines in homes, whether that's in the United States or worldwide. Let's start with how turbines work. So they work by converting the kinetic energy in the, in the wind into mechanical power, which is then transformed into electricity. Here's a little breakdown of the process. So the wind turbines are designed to catch the wind. When the wind blows, it causes the blades to rotate. Those blades are pretty huge and stretch about 170 feet long. Some offshore blades can reach over 350 feet. That's over 100 meters long. The bigger the blade, the more energy generation. So if we downsize those huge wind turbines to fit into our properties, whether that's on the rooftop or on a tower, the energy generation potential decreases significantly. The main part that sits behind the blades is called nacelle, and it contains the low and high wind shafts, generator, gears, and a brake. The yaw drive system controls the orientation of the blades and keep the turbine facing the wind when direction of it changes. There is also a pitch system that adjusts the angle of the turbine's blades with respect to the wind and also controlling the rotor speed. All those mechanisms work together to maintain performance but also keep the turbine from self-destruction if the winds are too strong. It is quite a lot of moving parts if you dive deeper into the nacelle as a whole. But getting back to how it works, so as those blades spin, they turn a shaft connected to the generator, which produces electricity. On a wind power plant, you will have an array of wind turbines in the same location. Transmission lines carry the electricity at high voltages over long distances, and then when it gets to the transformer station, the voltage decreases or increases, depending on whether it's going farther or not and deliver powers as needed. Usually those transformers will increase the voltage and reduce the current, which allows for, for less power losses during transportation. And then finally, when electricity reaches the community where the power is gonna be used, the transformers will then reduce the voltage to make it safe and usable by buildings and homes. Now, when it comes to the location choice for these big wind farms, lots of it depends on factors like wind conditions, the surrounding terrain, and obviously access to electricity transmissions. But when it comes to our homes and deciding if wind turbines would actually make any impact, we have to look at average wind speed in our area. Global Wind Atlas is a great resource that I will link for you down below so you can check for your home and your area as well. But let's stick to Dallas and my area area for now. So at about 10 meters high, we have an average speed of 2.57 meters per second wind speed. And the higher you go, the higher the speed. So let's look at 100 meters height. Now we get 5.5 meters per second. Not quite double, but a significant increase in speed. Now let's jump over just two counties over to the west. Now you can see that even at 10 feet height, we get 5.8 meters per second speeds. This is because the wind speed in urban areas 
areas are slower than in the country areas. Tall buildings block the wind and slow it down. Same for trees and even one or two story homes. Another clue here is the fact that we checked two heights, 100 meters and 10 meters. The higher into the atmosphere, the higher the wind. So the ability to generate a set amount of power will significantly depend on your location and ability to set your micro turbine as high as possible. The higher the tower, the smoother and more consistent the wind is going to be. But what does speed really mean when it comes to micro turbines power generation? Well, on average, micro wind turbine may have a power output rating from a few hundred watts all the way to a few kilowatts, and some even come in 10 to 20 kilowatt ranges. All of this again will depend on the application. So we look at the power generation for around 7.62 meters per second speed, we can expect about 417 watts per square meter of production. But then if we go down to around 2.57 meters per second speed, we now get only 22 watts per square meter, which is a huge decrease in power production. You can easily check out the production in your area based on the Global Wind Atlas as well. And again, I will make sure to link it down in the description below. Let's talk about different wind turbine options. So when we downside the commercial scaled wind turbines, we remove some of the mechanism system like the pitch or the yaw system. So we also start limiting the ability of the wind turbine to direct the wind perfectly. Now, most common micro wind turbines look very similar to commercial wind turbines, and they're referred to as horizontal axis turbine, H-A-W-T. They operate horizontally, turning at the top of the tower so that the blades face the wind. Another type would be a vertical axis turbine, V-A-W-T, which is exactly the opposite, and it basically operates perpendicular to the ground, and it rotates vertically. These can catch the wind coming from any direction and are often referred to as omnidirectional. Those also don't need to be pointed directly into the wind. This is the one that I personally think will have a bigger impact in residential applications since we avoid using, using pitching system or the yaw system. Now the horizontal axis turbines tend to be more efficient on a large scale applications, but with vertical axis, even with lower efficiency, those can start generating power at lower wind speeds. They are also simpler in design, so potentially they're being made easier to maintain. There are also some cool new designs like the motionless wind turbines by Aeromine or the Archimedes Rose looking turbine, but we will get into those in just a minute. Now let's talk a little bit about the cons. So the wind does not blow all the time. So most of the time, those wind turbines operate at 20 to 40% of their capacity. And when the wind is blowing, they can vibrate and generate some noise because of the movement. And obviously the faster they move, the higher the noise. Another big aspect that we covered already is their height. The higher the tower or rooftop application, the better the energy generation, but also the uglier the look. A lot of homeowners in the United States took their sweet time to get used to the looks of solar panels themselves, and in a lot of cases, homeowner associations still try to limit their visibility from streets or other homes. So now, imagine the struggle we will face when we bring on wind turbines that stick out of our rooftops or standalone towers. I mean, I personally can already see them emailing us and asking that the wind turbine be lower than the fence line to block the view. But that would literally defeat the purpose of installing one in the first place. So wind power will definitely make more sense in more ruler country areas where the height won't won't be an issue, HOA won't be an issue, and will also generate higher yields considering the higher wind speeds. Now on top of those two drawbacks, there is also the extra cost of maintenance associated with wind turbines. Since those have moving parts, that cost would range based on the turbine type. Hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> Max, get down. <laughs> Hi. Sit. 
That cost will range based on the turbine type and the system, but we can expect anywhere from one to 2% of the original investment cost. So anywhere from 100 to $200 per turbine. Now, I honestly can see that being higher. If we look at just one truck roll per year for a technician to check on the motor and all the other electronics, and depending on obviously the height of the turbine, I could see it costing anywhere from 200 to $500 per service call. So obviously comparing it to a solar system, there are no moving parts and the system rarely has any issue if installed correctly and properly. So how much do those wind turbines cost? Well, there's quite a lot of different models and sizes, but the price can range from around $1,000 all the way up to $10,000 depending on the size. So now comparing the cost of a whole home wind turbine system, we're starting to look at 50 or even $100,000, the bigger the energy consumption. Now, not to mention the proper sizing based on the wind speeds in your area. So comparing it to a solar system that has similar outputs, whether you're in the urban area or if you're in the countryside, we can see that solar on residential application is still much more cost effective than wind. And considering that there are not a whole lot of companies in the United States making or installing these turbines. Determining the cost of one is actually pretty difficult. With solar being so much more advanced in the residential market, it's almost a no-brainer to decide on just adding more panels than adding a wind turbine to your home. If you've watched me or my other content in the past, you know that I'm actually a very optimistic person and I have a huge love for renewables. So this actually is breaking my heart, but facts are facts. Now, wind is still one of the greatest and greenest power source as far as renewable energy resources. And that's why so many companies around the world have been trying to invent a residential wind turbine that will be more feasible to homeowners like you and I. A few that caught my eye was number one, Icewind, made by a company in Iceland. And as of today, it looks like it's still only available for pre-orders. I actually emailed them to find out about the possible date for release yesterday. And just before we were recording of this video, I got a response. And the short answer to my when question was Q1 of next year. But they, they did say they're coming out with a new product. Uh, and discontinuing the current one. And they're also gonna take down the pre-order option from the website. They also clarified that their products are designed for industrial and critical applications like telecom. But that does not mean that it cannot be installed on a residential property, which is great. Another big one that got a ton of interest is Liam F1 or AWM by a Dutch company called Archimedes. Their design has a ton of promising specification, focuses on high power outputs with limited noise and based on their website in 2016 all of their activities were moved to South Korea and the company seems to be on the lookout for distributions and manufacturers but since 2016 not much has happened so even though there are a ton of viral videos about this product online it does not seem like anyone can actually buy that wind turbine for their home that design in particular looks very promising but like most of you watching we will believe it when we see it and the last one another pretty cool one option is by a product by an Asian company Ridge Blade they created a product that is installed on top of the roofs Ridge, as the name says it is set to cost about three to five thousand dollars for every kilowatt of power which falls in a similar cost per kilowatt as solar slightly slightly higher but that product does not seem to be available just yet either it looks like it made an Irish debut, but that's all I could have found online. And just a quick note here, if you've enjoyed this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a big, big like. It I would so appreciate it. And also, if you know about any other promising turbines or any cool products, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Most of these cool turbines are still in the development phase, and I hate to be so negative, even though I'm smiling about it. Uh, but to me, it seems like there's just too many inventors and scientists, but very few manufacturers or businesses that would actually want to invest in it and sell it on a bigger scale. 
Overall, the cons as of today still make me think that solar will be the leader in the residential market for renewable energy resources, but I am very hopeful that in the future we will find a way to stick to the best design and start mass production. You know, if I lived in the countryside right now with higher wind speeds, I would be the first person to install one of these cool products on my property alongside my beautiful ground mounted solar array. Now, if we can only find that one perfect design that provides the highest efficiency in lower altitudes, like 20 or 30 feet above the ground, like at the rooftop lever of our homes, and one that can be relatively quiet and as low maintenance as possible, I know we're asking for a lot, we would find a great supplemental source of power to our residential solar systems. I personally don't see how wind, just wind, could beat residential solar just yet, but let's see. What do you guys think? How do you see this sector of micro wind turbines working out in the future? Please let me know down in the comments. That's it for today and I will see you in my next one.